So, job done for both Liverpool and Chelsea tonight. Harry, before we talk about the how, in terms of Chelsea, going through from that group, what sort of achievement is that to see last season's Champions League semi-finalist Ajax out and you going through? Absolutely huge. I think it's, uh, it's been fantastic for Chelsea, uh, especially what they're going through um, and the way that the team's performed, especially over these last couple of months, um, it's been phenomenal. And like I said, I think Frank would have come into this game knowing that they should have won, but potentially in any game you could slip up. But they went out there today, done a professional job, and like I said, now you can put that to bed and now concentrate back on the Premier League. Did they give themselves a bit of an unnecessary scare? I think so. There? I think so. Watching the game, looked fairly comfortable. Great start to the game, 2 nothing up. Lille looked poor, I've got to say. First half, I thought they were bang average at best. And then sometimes you just want to see the game out, they lose a goal. I wouldn't say you're hanging on the last five, ten minutes, but it's, a, it's, a, it's certainly a nervy um, last five or ten minutes. But it's a great achievement for, for Chelsea. It's on the start they had, you know, and not in the... Tonight, I mean, to the group losing to Valencia, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> had a great result over in over in Ajax, and I think it's it's a it's a really good achievement because you look at the the transformation in the team. I mean, you, you think that they lost one of the greatest players in, in, in Europe last year, with Hazard going away, and nobody's really talking about him. The young lads have come in, whether it's Mount, Abraham, Hodgson, Adoy to a lesser extent, uh, Pulisic, they've been excellent. Um, on a little bit of a run, where they'd only won two of the last seven, it was vital for them, Jeff, tonight to go over the line, and they did. I mean, also as well, for the young players on their side, Harry, <coughs> in a way, that experience of the last ten minutes or so, when things did look a little bit dicey, that won't do them any harm either, in terms of learning about game management. I think that's probably one thing that we all sit here and, and we look at Chelsea at the moment, is he's given Chelsea that freedom to really go out and attack. But that's going for 90 minutes, which is which is fantastic. But I think sometimes there's just got to be game management. And like you said, Lil came back into the game, and just before the end, then they had a wonderful Remy had a wonderful opportunity, and that could have just completely yeah. destroyed Chelsea's uh, going through. So again, I think there's a little bit of game management mm. also with his main players as well to take that on instead of just bombing forward. Well, I mean, we were sitting watching them, weren't we, with five minutes to go, and right in the corner, if like Canty's up doing an overlap or Wallian was going over in the right-hand side, and we're saying, steady on, guys, just see the game out, sit, get the ball, keep the ball for five, ten minutes and see the game out, and they're st still going forward. And there's no doubt Frank and, and Jody Morris have given them more licence to do that, but there is an element of just see the game out, and game, game management is vitally important, obviously. Also, I mean, he made three changes from the weekend. He wasn't happy with some of the <coughs> things he saw at Goodison. Yeah. Will that have had an effect at all? Oh, definitely. Um, listen, things are going really well for Frank and Chelsea, but it wasn't going to go plain sailing all the way throughout the season. They had a big hiccup uh, at Everton, and it was a perhaps it was a wake up call. But you know, it, it, was, a, it was a difficult game for for Chelsea at the weekend because obviously everything that was happening with Everton, you know, if, if Everton, Everton were ever going to get a reaction, you know, they were going to get it against Chelsea with Duncan Ferguson being in charge. Right? Clearly, Duncan was going to get a, a, a reaction at the team. And a very, very coming off a really disappointing performance and particularly disappointing result against Liverpool. So Everton, you could, Everton, you could say were a you know a kind of wounded animal that Chelsea probably got at the wrong time, but it was still a poor performance. I mean, you mentioned Liverpool there again. Job done tonight. All the talk of this this game it was in the balance, even more so for <laughs> Liverpool going away from home. They just about beat Salzburg at home, made hard work of it, but in the end, it was cigar and slippers, wasn't it? Well, the first 60 minutes was a fantastic game. Mm. I think. I mean, the, the shots, the, the chances. I mean, I, I, I'm actually quite sure it could have went two, two all at a half time. I mean, it was that such a, an exciting game? And then, literally, just before Liverpool scored, Haaland had an absolute wonderful chance yeah, down chance. the left hand side, mm -hmm. and obviously hitting it into the side netting. And then, again. Sometimes that's just that little spark, Liverpool. I mean, they look sharp. I mean, Salah had a couple of chances in the game and then Mane just did a bit of brilliance down the uh, left-hand flank. Nice little clip for, for Keita, who, again, he's finding that little bit of yeah. form. He's busting forward and, and he's looking confident and he got the lead. It was funny. It was, it was if, and you boys will know what I mean, it was this Liverpool spoiled the game by scoring. Because the, <laughs> the, the game for an hour was, was terrific. It was end-to-end. -end. Both sides were attacking. Really enjoyable game. And then Keita scored the header. Manny down the left-hand side. And you could see the, the spirit kind of getting sucked out of the opposition. Was it, was it like something like 100 seconds between the... Two goals. Two goals. So that's, you know, down I mean, very when, when we were watching it, I, I, I found it quite interesting 
given what had been said in the press conference the previous day, Liverpool only needed a draw. And the way they approached the game and the way they attacked Salzburg, does that tell us anything? Is it the only way Liverpool play? Was it uh, when they're at their best? Is the best form of defence attack? Did that tell us anything? Well, it's an interesting one because when you do go into a game as a player and knowing that you've only got a draw to get through, for some known reason, something goes in your mind thinking, OK, well, it's kind of chilled, you know, it's all that kind of stuff. Whereas Klopp's teams don't have that. I mean, I think we, we knew that from the start when he actually started his, his 11. You know, that's a pretty, pretty formidable team. You know, that's like he's starting 11. So he went out there and, again, it was end-to-end -end stuff. Don't you know, Salzburg, you know, took it to the Liverpool, especially mm. at the start, but Liverpool had their chances. But, again, you look at the quality up top and Liverpool have abundance in that and that's where they get their goals. That's the real Liverpool play. Listen, that's the bottom line. That's the way they play. If, if you're going Klopp had been out there <clears throat> with a def defensive mindset, right, and tried to say to Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold, look, just stay where you are, keep the solid four, and all of a sudden they lose a goal, they get absolutely crucified, right? The what, play, what, the what, what other teams approached it differently, Ali? Possibly. Because other teams have got different personnel. What Liverpool do is they play to their strengths. Now, mm. certainly for me, the strengths of their full-backs in particular are getting forward. Robertson down the left, Trent Alexander down the right. They're brilliant at it. That's their, you know, one of their, their greatest attacking strengths is in wide areas. So if you change that and alter it, you're not playing to your team's strengths. But a different team might have a different, you know, different setup and it might not suit them for the fullbacks to go pressing forward and leaving gaps in the outsides of the centre backs. There was a lot of talk about Erling Haaland ahead of this game. What did you both make of him tonight? Yeah, it's a lot of talk and obviously he scored a lot of goals in the Champions League. Um, for me, look, he's, he's still young. I mean, he's coming up against a... I mean, I think in the first 30 seconds he went clear on goal and then within two seconds Van Dijk just got up to him and all that. And so I think he's still learning the, the game. He had a couple of wonderful chances. I mean, he'd done well in the first half with Lovren. He held him off and had that shot. I think there's signs, um, but it's a, it's a long way to go. And I'm coming happy top with, of the group? I'm happy with it. I really am. I think he's a, I think he's a player. I, I, I do. I genuinely do. He scored in the game at Anfield. I saw enough of him. You're right. Absolutely spot on. He missed a couple of chances, but he created them. Not scared. He's powerfully strong. He looks quick enough. And he had, he's not, nothing like the finished article. But I, I still think. You know what I did like player, though, as well as a, as a striker, he was always in the box. Yeah. He was always in the box for crosses and looking for them little drop downs or anything like that. So yeah, he's got something. Now. Another thing that came out of the game this evening, just while we were watching it and chatting, was uh, Sadio Mane. Uh, as you probably know, he finished joint Golden Boot winner last season. Um, the question rose, is he a natural goal scorer? Harry, you go first. <laughs> For me, look, I, first and foremost, he's a brilliant player. And what he's, what he's achieving for himself at the moment, especially playing out wide, is phenomenal. I mean... He's literally disarming teams. I mean, he is the, the player at the moment that's on form and no one can seem to stop him. I mean, again, today he's, he's playing with this air of confidence. Every time the ball's dropping to him, he's controlling it, he's skipping past people. And the only way to and really bring he's him down... Score. And the only way to bring him down is to, to tackle him. <laughs> my question is, well... My answer, my my, your, your, your answer, my answer long to your question answer this. is... No, I don't think he is a natural goal scorer. I think he's a, he's a good finisher but not a, a, a natural finisher. Now, as somebody who... Now, would you describe yourself as a natural goal scorer? Oh, I think it would be very unfair to me describe myself. People like, probably can't believe I'm saying that. But a natural goal scorer to me is <clears throat> Lewandowski, Gerd Muller, Harry Kane, Robbie Fowler, Michael Owen, that type. Sadio Mane, for 45 minutes we were at the game against Everton, gave one of the best performances I've seen all, all season. And he will score a lot of goals. Is he natural? Well, what, what is a natural goal scorer? A natural goal scorer is somebody that, that goes through with the goalkeeper to beat and is 100% confident that he'll score. And is probably 100% confident that he'll score just about every opportunity. Um, we'll watch Manny going through against Everton a couple of times and you just sense there's a little bit of doubt. Whereas, <clears throat> I'm talking about those players, if you saw Michael Owen go through or even Robbie Fowler, you fancied them. You really fancy them to score. Now, 
This is a, a bizarre conversation that we're having about one of the best players in Europe at this moment in time, I have to tell you. Well, I, I, I'm <clears> slightly <throat> baffled by both of your observations. You didn't actually answer the question. Is he a natural goal scorer? No. You said you weren't sure earlier. I, I, I said I wasn't sure, but I come on this programme, the programme's called The Debate and you want an answer <laughs> of it. And you know fine well you'd have been on my case if I said I'm not sure. So that's why I've got no. Can you now, in, in, in a way, <clears throat> you said somebody who's born to score goals. Yes. Can you become a natural goal scorer? No, no you can't become a natural goal scorer. But why you, not? Because, you be, because it's not natural to you. You can become a better finisher. You can become a top-class finisher, but in my opinion, you can't become a natural goal scorer. You're born with it. It's not good. He's, 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 looking smart. he's actually said it's perfect. What no. he said is perfect. OK, so say somebody like Mane, yep. OK, I think I'm right in saying he's currently um, Liverpool's leading goal scorer in the Premier League. Yeah. Not bad for not a natural goal scorer. Um, if he, more goals he scores, so every time he goes through, he thinks he's going to score, does he not become a natural goal scorer? Surely, by your own definition, he's become a natural goal scorer. But I don't, I don't think, I don't think he, he I don't think he, he will have that. I mean, look, he grows in confidence. There's, there's no question about it. But again, it's just that, that thing natural goal scorers have. Liverpool fans will know exactly what we mean if we're talking about Sadio Mane and Robbie Fowler. I, I know what you mean. <clears throat> I'm saying to you, is it possible? I mean, Cristiano Ronaldo, did he start as a natural goal scorer? Well, he started off as a winger, obviously, and progressed. OK. Right? And as he progressed, as he went through one-on-one, -on -one, how convinced you were he was going to score every time? Oh, I find him all the time. Right, so the attributes of a natural goal scorer. Yes. So you can become a natural goal scorer. No, I thought he was a natural goal scorer. <laughs> You've made that up. <laughs> no. So if Marley gets to the stage where every time he goes through, he's scoring, he's a natural goal scorer. Well, first and foremost, that would be brilliant for Liverpool. Of course. Brilliant for Mane. And then, like I <coughs> said, he, he will be probably winning the Ballon d'Or. Because he, he, he's probably doing it. But... At this moment in time, I'm saying he's well. He's, he's not a natural finisher. He's a brilliant player. There's no question about that. But like I said, <laughs> the, most, just... the most the most improved player, in my opinion, in front of goal in the last 18 months to two years might be Raheem Sterling, right? Yes. But I don't think he's a natural goal scorer. But he's the most improved finisher. Okay. My question there is is because he is has improved in his finish. Is that Pep Guardiola teaching him to be in the right positions at the right time? Probably an element of, element of that, but the man that deserves the most credit for that would be Raheem Sterling, because he's clearly, in my opinion, it looks as though he's worked on his finishing. He's probably looked at videos and where he wants to go, where he wants to stand, where he wants to run, and he's reaping the benefits from it. He, he said, in fact, he said exactly that. We did an interview with him on Friday. We talked about because he turned 25. So pleased about that. He, t he turned 25 on Sunday, and I said, you know. The age you're at now, what have you matured to? Is, is, and he said, well, in the old days, I used to enjoy. Him obviously enjoy the game, and I would look at assists, or not tricks, he didn't use a, a word like that, but he basically said, now, I look at how many goals I score. He said, I look, obviously assists are still important, but that now he realises the importance. Natural goal scorers, Jeff, think differently to any other football player on their team. Are the words <coughs> you're looking for greedy and selfish? Uh, uh, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Natural goal scorers can play in a team that comfortably win 4-0 and they're not happy if they don't score. Hang on, uh, this, this whole expression, natural goal scorer, and obviously I've been around it for a long time, and I understand what you're saying about type of goals. It's as though we, we've got in our mind, somebody like yourself, tap-ins, straightforward all the time. But Marnik, 23 goals last season. He must yeah. have some natural ability to score a goal. No doubt about that. That's, so, uh, that's so not what, a question. He, he has ability to score goals. Like, his goal against Everton was... Beautifully well taken, especially on his left Man, foot, side foot, and very quick, yeah. very early, and all that. Right. All I'm saying, he could have walked off there with the ball, with a hat trick, mm. with a lot easier chances. He seems to score harder goals yeah. than <clears throat> the easier ones. And if you could kind of mix that back, does in that there, make him not a natural goal scorer? What missing the easy ones? Yeah. No, that that means he. he, he, he it probably comes from where if a natural finisher especially with an easy chance, will tap it away. There's no panic. You, you, you see in their eyes, there's, there's no panic in front of goal. There's calm, there's composure, and they'll put it in. Flip it. If he learns those tap-ins, can a natural goal scorer, the type you're describing, score the type of goals that he scores? He, I, could, he could add that to I, his game. I think natural goal scorers score all types of goals. Every type of goal. <clears throat> I mean, the, the best way I could describe it to you would, would, 
to, to, to compare, right? Listen, the one thing I think we're in total agreement, Manny's an absolutely phenomenal player. I mean, I can't tell you how impressed I've been with him when, when I saw him in that, that game against Everton in particular. But he's not Robbie Fowler. He doesn't bring it to the party what Robbie Fowler does. He doesn't bring it to the party what Lewandowski does. Come back further, Gerd Muller, boys like that. You know, Lineker. Yep. Different, but, but a top, top player. What if Sadio Mane <laughs> finishes this season as the Premier League's top goal scorer with 32 goals? Liverpool have won the title. Yeah, I OK. I'm happy. OK, so say, would that, if he He's scored the amount won. of goals, well, would no. it make him a natural Again, goal scorer? Jeff, you can keep going with these <laughs> questions, but every time we ask this, we, we, we talk and everyone turns around and says there's natural finishers and there's finishers. It's just what it is. Mm. <laughs> you're, you're certainly not happy. <laughs> you look as though we've spoiled your evening, <laughs> to be quite frank. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who could probably do it with a natural goal scorer right now is poor old West Ham, really struggling and uh, beaten by Arsenal on the Monday night football yesterday. Is that the sort of result, Ali, as well, that could have fairly big ramifications for both managers? Freddie Jungberg, the caretaker manager for Arsenal, his first win in charge. Yep. And um, poor old... Manuel Pellegrini, that's now one win in 11th and they're down in 16th. I can't believe the position they're in, to be honest, West Ham. Um, I thought at the start of the season, shows you how much I know about it, I thought they'd be up top 10 anyway. I mean, I, I thought quite comfortably, but the run of form has been really, really poor. Now, what, what disappointed me or what would have really worried me, Jeff, watching that game last night, which I did do in <clears> the <throat> second half, was the way they reacted to an equaliser, to going 2-1 down and going 3-1 down. That's what concerned me. And we're speaking to a few of the West Ham fans this morning. That's what worried them. Mm. You know, there was no real reaction at all to going behind, no real fight, no desire to get back into the game. And that, for me, would be the biggest worry for West Ham. And I've got some... We know we've got, looked at it earlier, they've got some big, big games coming up now. And, and, and make no mistake about it, we hear this nonsense getting spoken all the time. Our, our team's too good to go down. West Ham are in trouble. For me, watching the game, I thought it was a poor game. I yeah. mean, uh, especially mm. up until, uh, obviously, that 10 minutes where Arsenal scored their, their three mm. goals. I suppose what the worrying thing is, is the fact that West Ham actually didn't capitalise. You mm. know, because Arsenal... Were they were there for poor. the taking? Yeah, they were. I mean, I, I get playing out from the back. I get, you know, switching the ball. But some of the passes I saw, especially from Arsenal last night, were just horrendous. Like, the, the balls... Actually, Torreira tried to do a little flick on the edge of his 18-yard box. In the second half, uh, Xhaka tried to uh, cross the... Uh, crossfield. Crossfield yeah. pass. And I'm just sitting there going, that's, that's... Let alone that's not Arsenal, but that's just not football. You don't do that. And, and the problem was, <coughs> West Ham didn't capitalise on that. And like I said, even though they have... OK, not a, not a great defence Arsenal. They've got some fantastic players going forward. And even if they're not firing, especially <coughs> in the first half, <coughs> you give them one chance. Yeah. And like you said, we saw Pepe in a, in a, in a glimpse just went bang, goal. Mm. You know, and then he set the other one for a bummy yang and all that. But for me... That's the difference. The difference between the two teams for me last night summed up where well, Arsenal have got players that can win a game like that. Pepe, I know it was his first goal from open play. I think he scored three or four beforehand. But it was a brilliant goal. Absolutely brilliant goal. And then you've got somebody like Obama Young, a natural finisher up front, who can, <laughs> who can score your goals. Well, uh, another natural finisher, Lacazette, left on the bench. Yeah, interesting. Big, big call, wasn't it? It was a massive call. A massive call. <clears throat> but then again, we're looking at the win 3 1, so it's the, you know, he'll say it's the right call. Because, mm. you, you know, if, if West, West Ham scored another goal, he beat 2 0, everybody's asking the question, where's Lacazette? But because it turned out fine, that's a good call. Wins, or obviously good results for, for a young bloke, what he wants is the job he's been given. At the moment, it's game by game. But for Arsenal, does that give them breathing space as well? Because they were, they were drifting, they were bottom half of the table in terms of... I mean, we're led to believe there's up to ten candidates that they're considering. So even if Freddie Jungberg isn't going to get the job long-term, they need him to buy them some time short-term. I don't know, he might get the job long-term, I don't know, but... Look, if results go his way, if he gets another win on the weekend and keeps going, then fair enough, that kind of gives Arsenal that little bit of breathing space because I think Arsenal need to pick right. I suppose the one thing that Arsenal don't want to do is kind of do what Man United did, you mm -hmm. know, after having a great manager, then going down the lines of chopping and changing and then don't know what they 
don't know what they're doing. So I think Arsenal will take their time and pick and hopefully Freddie can get the results that they need to kind of put them back up there in I wouldn't say contention in the top four, but obviously squeeze them up to, you know, as close as possible, then you never know. I can't see that happening. It's your top four, I think. Forget about it. I think your spot... Top six? Maybe. I think the most important thing for Arsenal is they get the right man for the job. I think we, we, we discussed it. I think we can see Arsenal, what we think are Arsenal's problems. Clearly, in my opinion, defensively, they've got better players going forward. That side of the park, other side of the park, defensively, they're not good enough. But they need... I don't think Freddie will get the job. I don't think he should get the job. But he could do it himself and Arsenal a massive favour by getting a few results and buying them a little bit of time. You say he shouldn't get the job. What if he goes on a fantastic run, gets them um, top six or top four? Does that not mean he, he demands the job? I think he could demand it. I, I would still say I don't think he should get it. The same way I wasn't sure about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer getting that job. And I'll stand by it. A good result yesterday at West Ham and Manchester United. Two great results. Great results against Spurs and a great result and a fantastic performance against Manchester City. Hasn't got them right out of the woods yet. They've still got a long, long way to go before they can count themselves back in the top four and playing where they really want to play and that's challenging for the title and in the Champions League again.